and welcome to the Planning, Economic Development and Housing Committee meeting. Tonight, we only have one item on the agenda, and that is a presentation from uh, Tony Shirellis, the Transportation Hartford Coordinator for the Center for Latino Progress. We have with us committee members here tonight. We have Councilwoman uh, Marilyn Rossetti, we have Councilman John Gale, and we have Councilman uh, Josh Mitchum. Uh, we also um, have with us Mr. Uh, Tony Shirellis. Uh, Tony will be discussing amending the existing parking lot licensing and registration ordinance. The purpose of this presentation is to discuss potential for service parking lots to garner revenue which can be used to improve infrastructure around our city. Great thing. If there are any members in the public who is wishing to speak, you know, please hold your questions um, until Tony is finished with his presentation. And after all the council members have asked their presentation, uh, then we can allow the public, if they're joining with us, to speak and ask any questions. As a friendly reminding to everyone, please mute yourself um, and thank everyone for joining us. And good evening, uh, Tony for joining us and thank you so very much for doing this presentation. Tony, I'm gonna to turn the mic over to you. All right, I, I, I didn't know if uh, Council Member Gale, if you wanted to uh, start uh, with an introduction as uh, you're uh, more familiar with the ordinance and have brought the existing ordinance to our attention. Sure. Um, and thank you, uh, Tony, and thank you, uh, Chairwoman Surgeon. Uh, quick uh, background. Uh, uh, no, no, no news to anybody on this committee that uh, we have an ongoing issue with uh, parking lots in the city of Hartford. And um, some of you may know that uh, there's been different. Uh, different attempts to approach um, uh, ways to encourage people to uh, utilize other means of transportation as well as look at ways to potentially get uh, valuable land developed so that it's paying more in uh, taxes. Um, long story short, at some point in time, we were looking at something called a land value tax which has been successfully used in um, some communities across the United States. The largest community that ever used it was Pittsburgh. Um, and uh, in the last council, we actually got some presentations from uh, some, some folks that were uh, studying this in think tanks, uh, but um, it, it had the very admirable uh, goal of encouraging construction on vacant lots like parking lots but it, um, it's much better done if you're starting from ground zero than if you're starting with an already built environment such as Hartford uh, and trying to overlay it. We did get legislative approval to try it, but, but we were never able to come up with a successful formula. So we've looked at other ways and uh, with the very able assistance of uh, Mr. Chirolis here, uh, there's, uh, he's done a, a remarkable job at looking at our parking lot registration uh, ordinance, uh, and I'm going to then ask that, and, and Tony will, uh, I, I believe he's going to go back over and, and explain some of the data that leads us to where we are today and the importance of uh, doing something, and, uh, and then we actually have a draft ordinance that can be looked at, um, and I think the ultimate goal is uh, if there's reasonable consensus that this makes sense that we act, we, we introduce it so it's on the next council agenda and and we move from there so with that uh with that little short introduction um tony i'll, I'll throw it back to you uh with the chair's permission uh yes sir. i just want to also announce tony that um i believe uh uh councilman sanchez has joined us just want to make sure we acknowledge him and i believe you guys got a copy of all the uh copy of the ordinance was mailed to all the committee members and Councilman Nick LeBron also has joined us. So, okay, Tony, uh, the mic is yours. So, uh, folks should be able to see uh, my screen now. 
Um, yes. And uh, I'm going to go through just a little bit of background information. I don't have the markup ordinance in front of me here. We can, uh, since that was sent to everybody, perhaps uh, uh, that could be brought up uh, to talk more detail. Uh, the uh, In 2002, there was a commercial parking lot registration and license fee ordinance. Um, and I got a link here, uh, so if folks got a, uh, I sent the PDF along, so if folks have got this PDF, they can go straight to it in I think, chapter 22. Uh, the existing ordinance has a, a very low uh, fee, I believe, that the uh, total value uh, returns uh, per year by that fee for all of the parking lots it is applied to in the city, commercial lots that have paid parking, uh, is less than $30,000 a year. Uh, so that's probably, uh, the revenue is it's likely uh, similar to the level of uh, overhead that it costs to have the um, The uh, proposal is to increase that, uh, that fee uh, to make this more of a revenue generating um, ordinance to recoup a sliver of the tra transportation infrastructure maintenance and improvement costs. And there's also uh, a lot of uh, peripheral costs uh, that we incur as a, as a large city and uh, regional employment hub of, of the Metro Hartford region, uh, including our traffic enforcement costs, uh, the uh, health, uh, negative health impacts of air pollution that gets concentrated in uh, in the city and near dense residential, uh, where I think Hartford is currently ranked uh, number 13 um, in the nation as an asthma capital. Uh, the, uh, um, and we know that the negative health impacts of poor air quality on our, on our residents. Uh, so uh, just to have a snapshot of uh, the existing ordinance, the cup, there's a couple lines of it here in this slide, um, but I'll go over. To just a couple other background slides. Um, this is not my uh, graph. Uh, Hartford, uh, unfortunately, is, is a, um, a very popular for people, uh, um, for academics studying the negative effects of excessive uh, parking uh, and service parking lots and garages as well. Uh, so this is a study from uh, UConn. Uh, professor and graduate student, uh, the Professor Norman Garrett, the graduate student, is uh, Chris McCahill, who now works at Transportation uh, for America. Um, and this shows in 1960 uh, the amount of land dedicated to parking, uh, and then again in 2000, the amount of land dedicated to the, the red color is surface parking. The maroon is uh, parking structures, and the kind of dashed ones are underbuilding, uh, like sunken structures for parking. Uh, so, so the, the parking uh, capacity balloon, uh, while at the same time the city experienced a significant decline in population. Uh, lots of uh, complicated reasons for that that I won't go into now. Uh, but it ended up putting the city in a situation where a lot of our land is, is dedicated to uh, non-productive uh, storage of uh, empty cars. Um, uh, Tony, can I just stop you for a quick second? You're a little yeah. bit mute. Could you speak up a little oh. bit louder uh, to yeah, make I, sure? I can, one... I, can, I can try and uh, speak a little louder. There uh, you go. Great. All right. The, uh, and I've got a couple of uh, links in here. The first one, uh, the 2014 WNPR article is actually where this graphic came from uh, so that everybody knows the source. So I didn't, I didn't just uh, do that. Um, uh, the, the, the kind of the perversity of our uh, oversupply of parking is that uh, the city of Hartford has a very high rate of zero car ownership households. And overall, the city has around 32% uh, of households without a car. Uh, so we have uh, way too much parking and a lot of people that don't even have a car. So the, the parking, uh, and especially the commercial parking lots, uh, primarily serve uh, non-Hartford residents. And, uh, 
as, as a Hartford resident, uh, our hub and spoke transit system and our compact nature uh, makes uh, our uh, walking mode share and our transit use mode share rather high. Um, so uh, the, these two charts kind of show uh, the one on the left is zero car households. So the, the lowest car ownership neighborhood in the city is Clay Arsenal with 50% of households not having a car. Um, South Green, uh, which is where I live and work, has 47% uh, of households without a car. Uh, and then it steps through uh, all the way to, uh, you'll see uh, in downtown Hartford, uh, you know, at the core of our transit hub and job center, uh, the average household income is uh, closer to uh, ninety to one hundred thousand uh, dollars, but the zero car ownership rate uh, still one in five households doesn't have a car in downtown. Um, and this is uh, data from the American uh, Community Survey that gets averaged over about five years because it's a smaller sample that they track it year after year um, with local surveys of different neighborhoods. Uh, the, to the to the right of the line is uh, West Hartford. Uh, more importantly, uh, or if we're considering West Hartford, um, we want to look at the multi-car household uh, chart on the right with the green lines. Uh, almost all of the neighborhoods in West Hartford uh, have 50% uh, or greater of their households with two or more cars. But that's just kind of showing that uh, the 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 users of our commercial parking, there's significant reason why uh, that uh, a fee that gets applied to our commercial parking lots is, is going to uh, significantly uh, be paid by uh, suburban car communities uh, that are using the facilities, you know, creating the wear and tear uh, on the street. So that's an appropriate uh, way for cost to be captured. Um, the, uh, you know, a you know, tangential reason we're talking about wear and tear and maintenance. Uh, but if we talk about our transportation system, the transportation sector, the largest uh, emitting sector of greenhouse gas uh, emissions in the state of Connecticut, uh, it uh, emits more than our residential and electric power sectors combined. Um, if we're aligning our city's policies and ordinances um, with the approved uh, plan of conservation and development, uh, that plan of conservation and development is a lot less car centric. Um, so um, having land uses, uh, um, putting a more appropriate price um, on a commercial parking lot is in, in line with that plan of conservation and development that the council members have already, uh, already seen in the view. So th this is just a very top level overview. It's not the markup uh, of the ordinance itself. It may be a little easy to look at here. Um, the initial, uh, the 2002 ordinance, um, it, in the definition of what commercial parking was covered, it did include uh, structures, uh, but in application, the uh, license and um, the license and inspection group uh, never did apply that fee to commercial garages, uh, even though those are physically structures. Uh, so the update, our recommendation to the update is to explicitly mention commercial parking garages so that uh, beyond surface parking lots, uh, they, you know, parking structures, commercial parking structures are also included in this. Uh, the uh, increase, increased fee, the, the proposal was to take it to uh, the equivalent of uh, 20, 25 cents per space per workday, uh, which uh, would, uh, and then apply that to the, the sizes of parking lots covered in the ordinance. Uh, that for a uh, person who drove to work alone every day uh, would cost that uh, that car commuter using a commercial lot uh, around $62. Um, Relative to the cost of operating and owning a, a motor vehicle, which is between six to ten thousand dollars a year, um, this is a marginal cost. A uh, typical car commuter is not going to uh, notice this. You know, a lot of times people talk about the cost of a cup of coffee, 
uh, a quarter a day uh, uh, increment to parking uh, costs uh, that would come back in the city's revenue. It's really in the noise uh, for a, a typical car commuter that's coming in and driving along and paying the park. Uh, it's also a relatively easy cost to manage um, by doing things like carpooling. Uh, that uh, you can instantaneously cut uh, commuter costs in half. Um, and this, this fee is not the largest of those fees, that, or largest of those costs that somebody would say if they were uh, in car commuting rather than driving away. Uh, the proposal is to have a planned in the ordinance increase uh, to uh, double that fee in 2025 to 50 cents per space per workday, and then again to a dollar per space per day in 2030, uh, and have that in the ordinance so that it is, is uh, a known and expected thing. Um, and the intent is not to uh, make it a painful thing, uh, but to have a, uh, a clear kind of message in the increase in cost uh, per commercial parking space uh, and have that baked right into the ordinance so that property owners are not surprised by uh, changing fees or a big jump at some point and they can plan ahead for. Uh, if, if for some reason this is enough to uh, spur them to do uh, development on that lot, uh, they have time to, you know, to understand the cost impact of the ordinance. Um, the fees apply to commercial parking surface or commercial uh, commercial parking with 16 or more spaces in the downtown district, uh, surface lots and garages. I should mention that I forgot to put garages. So that's, uh, you know, very small lots are not covered by this. Uh, so 15 spaces and under is not was not covered by the previous ordinance. I think it's a good idea to keep that um, for the updated ordinance. Um, and the, uh, the fees that I'm, I'm showing here as proposed apply in the downtown districts. Uh, outside of the downtown zone, the fees would be half of what is uh, applies to downtown. Uh, so those downtown districts are in the zoning map, I think DT1, DT2, or DT3. Um, the existing ordinance has an exception for parking lots that only serve residential users, and I think it would be a good idea to continue that residential only exception. Um, and uh, that exception would not apply if the, the parking is also used as paid commercial. Uh, it only applies as an exception if it's just residential parking. Um, so that's that's what we've been thinking about. Um, and I'm, I'm curious to hear what uh, folks think uh, or if they have questions. Oh, great. Thank you, Tony. That was very informative. Um, open up to any comments, questions from any of the council members. Uh, Councilman Gale. Uh, so if you, you, if you want, Tony, then be good. I was asking Tony to take his presentation down. Yes, so yes. yes. Um, there, there we go. Okay, I I have up a markup of the ordinance. If you'd like, um, we can take a quick walk through the ordinance in the same way that we just. Um, viewed Tony, I can attempt to share the screen. Um, I would, you're more than welcome to do so, so we can see um, what Tony's talking about. I haven't gotten a chance to take a look at it, so that'd be a great. I would thank you if you have it. Well, I don't know if I don't. I don't know if I know how to work this screen share business, but um, so somewhere down the bottom, it's that say, working. Is that uh, uh, yeah. yes, it is. Yep, there it is. Nice. Okay, so. Um, so let's go back up to the beginning here. So this, what you're looking at is our existing ordinance, um, Division 5 commercial lots. And um, you can see that the, the very first amendment uh, is to take the definition of commercial parking lot and add garage to it, which, is, which was never there. Um, so this would hit all the structured parking as well. Uh, the second amendment, um, the second bit of red here is the downtown districts. It's, this is just replacing 
because the zoning code's been updated. The downtown districts used to be B1, now they're called DT1, DT2, DT3. Um, dropping uh, down then uh, in, the, in the application for a permit, again, just to be consistent, of course, where uh, uh, the definition here is including uh, parking lot structure or garage. So again, just to make sure that we <laughs> we're uh, attempting to reach all of those different uh, parking. So then we get to the to the uh, meat of it here, and uh, uh, this then would be what the new fees are. Uh, and you can see the old fees. So uh, the the original fee for a lot having a capacity of 16 to 30 motor vehicles was $500 a year. That would go from $500 a year to $2,000 a year. Uh, lots having a capacity of up to 50 would go to 3,900. And then they essentially jump up $2,500 for every 20 parking spaces. Um, and so down, uh, you know, lots having a capacity of over 250 motor vehicles is the last one at the bottom, uh, would be 28,900 a year plus 2,500 for every increment of 20 motor vehicles. And we put an example in, in case anybody has a problem doing the math. Uh, so uh, you can see what we're talking about. Um, outside of the downtown district, you can also see that the existing ordinance does um, uh, collect for parking lots outside of the downtown, and it is half. So a lot 16 to 30 was $500 if it's commercial downtown. If it's outside of the downtown, it was $250. And that's going to be proposed to go up to a thousand, one half of the proposed increases. Um, and then, and this this becomes um, uh, where we're 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 telling people what's coming. So this gives this gives everybody the opportunity to plan over a ten year period because this is laid out so that this initial increase, as Tony mentioned, a quarter a day. Um, is what the what the cost is, and by the way, I think presently it's about uh, four cents, five cents a day. So you're going from four cents, five cents a day to a quarter a day. That's the initial increase, and that would that would stay in place for the next five years. Uh, but everybody's going to know when we if this is enacted that five years from now that's going to double again, and five years from then it's going to double again. So you're under you're under notice that. Over time, uh, if, if these are if these are painful for you, uh, find something else. Find some other way to uh, get yourself downtown, uh, carpool, uh, mass transit, uh, whatever. And the, likewise for the owners of the parking lots, uh, they may find a, a more economical use or economically advantageous use of the parking lot itself. Um, so dropping down from that. Um, uh, this is just more technical stuff. This, the purple here in duties of permittee. Um, we, we, there's added here uh, some some safety things that you you know, including the concept of bicycle riders, which should be included in everything now. Uh, so exits and entrances have to be located to take take all of these things into account. And mind you, there's no uh, pride in authorship here. So any, uh, any certainly any other council members, if there's you know, th there may be other things that have been uh, that it would be wise to use this opportunity to update. And and I I don't think uh, Tony and certainly myself uh, uh, are are um, adverse to that. Uh, so likewise, uh, another you know just another sort of upgrade on the landscaped areas. Uh, and this is an area, this is a part I think that Tony mentioned has not been particularly enforced by the city uh, over the years. It's in there that you're supposed to have these landscaped areas. I think we all know plenty of parking lots that don't have much of anything in the way of landscaping. Uh, but it's in there and we just added um, that, um, uh, you know, you've got to take into account bus shelters uh, in doing that. Um, Uh, and then there's a sort of a phase in uh, because these are two year permits, the way the the ordinance is currently structured. So um, 
this this uh, language is providing you with uh, with uh, uh, some ability to phase that in. The um, it, there's also a requirement that uh, these lots have staffing, um, and you can see that the the staffing requirement. Uh, it originally said you had to have staffing uh, through one half hour after closing time of establishments. So it was kind of trying to tie it to uh, bar closing times. If bars closed at 12, you would have to staff till 1230. Um, I, I think it's probably pretty consistent right now that these uh, places are closing at one and two. And so this is um, just saying you gotta, you gotta have your staffing through 130 and 230. Um, the next thing was inadvertently stricken. Uh, there was a, no intention to uh, have this apply to residential lots, and Tony mentioned that he didn't think it was a good idea. Uh, uh, nor, nor certainly do I. Um, we would leave the residential lots alone. Uh, we're we're just going to focus on the uh, on the commercial lots. And the, the last addition here is to add the Hartford Parking Authority as a potential for enforcement. Um, uh, parking Authority has um, capacity uh, and certainly has demonstrated that they're pretty darn good at enforcing from the complaints that I've heard from people that get tickets. Uh, so uh, there you have it. Um, uh, and I'll throw it back to the chair to throw it open for questions for, for Tony, for myself, for anybody. Oh, great. Thank you so very much, John. Any questions? Ah, Councilman Mitchell. Thank you, uh, Chairwoman, and thank you, Councilman Gale, and thank you, Tony. Um, I have a question about the the fees, the, the 25 cents, then 50 cents, then the dollar a day. Um, I mean, I, I, I very much understand the point that, that Councilman Gale makes about putting people on notice, but why why not start higher? I mean, do we, is there, was there, what went into that decision? Is there some thought about like what the profit margins look like for the folks running these lots or something like that? Because um, even passing that cost down to 62.50 a year, doesn't seem like an awful lot. It seems like you could start at the 50 cents. I, I don't disagree. I don't, I, I, where I felt we started it was at a entirely painless location. Um, but if there's interest in this, you know, being starting at a higher level, uh, I think that 50 cents is still uh, for most of our uh, single occupancy car commuters that are paying for commercial parking is still pretty negligible amount uh, of their transportation budget. And I would uh, I would say that, that the intention is to it, it, we, we've got we've got some concern right now about businesses staying open in downtown. So I think we have to be a little sensitive that this this we're not we don't we don't have such great leverage right now that um, uh, we could we could push for something, but but I think this gets the camel's nose in the in the tent if you will, uh, and that's I think that's just really important is getting the camel's nose in the tent. I I would be concerned if we go too high, that we get too much pushback and nothing happens. Uh, so I would rather you know start off with something that's. You know, we may not. You know, we may not get too much too much negative pushback at all on it. So, anyway, those are my thought. Councilman Mitchum, keep going. Yet more questions. Uh, thank, yeah, well, just a follow up to that. I, I I think that's an excellent point, and I, I agree that. It, but both what Mr. Tarola said and what Councilman Gill said, like it's so painless that it seems like it should be hard to object to. I just I wonder, and I, especially I asked Tony this. It, is there any kind of um, some research or data about like what is the level at which people stop coming? You know what I'm saying? Like, is there some change in the cost of parking that that is an actual deterrent? Because I 
my dream is that if that data exists, you know, we want to go right up to the edge. <laughs> yeah, and, and I mean, it's not really about the cost of the parking that is the deterrent. Like, people will pay uh, absurd amounts to park uh, if there's things they want to do. Um, the, where does it change transportation behavior? It definitely doesn't change it in a quarter a day. Um, uh, it probably doesn't change land use uh, planning uh, or development behavior at 25 cents a day either for free space. Um, I, you know, I, the, I, if, if I think about the things that I've seen change transportation behavior, which is, you know, how it finally has a behavior change. Um, when we see gas prices go from $2 a gallon to $4 a gallon, we see a couple of percent change in mode share so that 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 even even doubling gas price um has a, a, a pretty low percentage change in how people get around day to day uh so 25 cents a day 50 cents a day i don't i don't see either of those affecting someone's decision to if they prefer to drive somewhere to drive somewhere if they you know um it, it's not going to be a significant you know Cost impact. If you think of it as a percentage, like our lowest cost surface parking near downtown is probably the, the lots north of downtown. You know, if it's five or six dollars a day to park there. Um, if it was five fifty, would people change their behavior or uh, be significantly upset? Uh, probably not. Um, if it went up fifty cents every six months, then we'd probably do something. Um, but I, I, it, this is. This is in noise for for um, the costs to those consumers and their transportation budgets. Uh, Councilman Mitchum, finish. Oh, uh, Councilman Councilman Bermudez, please, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much for that presentation, and thank you, Councilman Gale, for taking the lead and um, allowing us to look at what the changes could mean. And so my question had to do with, given the initial phase in at 20, the 25 cents um, and given the amount of commercial spaces that we have right now, what is the uh, potential uh, amount, estimate amount that the city would recoup um, in, well, I'll call it phase one. What does that look like? That's a, that's a great question, and I don't think we, I don't know if Tony's calculated it. I have not uh, calculated it at this uh, at this time. Um, it, it, I, I I think we're we're going to be collecting, you know, the 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 old ordinance. I, hello, John, you went on mute. Oh, oh, the old ordinance just had three categories of fees. And so now the new ordinance um, keeps ramping the fees up uh, based on the, the the number of cars you're parking. So, you know, if we're if we're bringing in thirty thousand dollars a year presently, this is going to be dramatically more um, than thirty thousand, just because of the structure of it. And we can go through. We and it's a great question, and we really should have the answer for you, Tony. Did you have some? I, I just have napkin level, uh, but it's an order of magnitude. Uh, so, so if it's around uh, twenty-five or thirty thousand a year, um, they're off. The, what I've looked at before in just the downtown districts is around forty-four thousand spaces um, that are commercial parking uh, that, that uh, I was aware of that I could find. Um, you know, four thousand spaces is two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That's just the downtown district um, with that. Twenty-five cents per space per day per work day. Um, okay, that that's helpful. Thank you. So I'd, I'd Thank somewhere you. between two hundred fifty thousand and half a million. All right. So one of, and and thank you in your presentation, you know, mentioning the important data. Thirty percent of Hartford residents don't own a car. Um, they rely on public transportation. Mentioning. Uh, also, other important data and the asthma rates that we have are among the highest in our in our country. Um, and the fact that we have an estimated or had pre-COVID an estimated number of 80,000 people who uh, Monday through Friday 
Friday drive in to work to the city of Hartford. And so with that, we understand that the reality has changed since this pandemic. So I'm curious to, to know whether um, you, Tony, or Councilman Gale um, have acquired any kind of data of where we're at with, with those numbers now. Uh, because one of the things that we've read and that is trending, right, is that because so many folks are now working from home, what would have been impossible to do um, pre-COVID is now very possible. And so there's this, this robust idea of being able to work remotely in, in more places. And so wondering if there has been any data from either the business improvement district on what those numbers look like and, and how there is now this shift in the workforce uh, to have actually more people working from home and what those numbers look like for Hartford in the downtown area. Yeah, that's an interesting question. I don't I don't have the parking utilization numbers and I and I'm hesitant to make big future plans based on like in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, but but some very interesting things have happened, one being uh, telecommuting uh, and Zoom meetings are a lot more common now. Um, the from a general transportation perspective, uh, at this point, uh, bus transit is around 70% ridership of what it was pre-pandemic. Part of that is uh, high unemployment um, and telecommuting. Uh, so, so bus ridership is still a, a bit down from its pre-pandemic levels. Uh, our traffic counts on our uh, interstates and state routes are closer to 90% of pre-COVID levels, even though folks may not be driving into work if their employer is still uh, on like a telecommuting or remote work uh, setup. The, the amount of driving um, has gone up. Uh, the, the other thing with uh, transit to note is the uh, express bus ridership. It just kind of like the rail ridership went way, way down. Uh, so the express bus riders coming in from the suburban communities are typically coming from households that are multi-car households, and they take the express bus because that was more convenient, uh, but they do have a car at home. Uh, so a lot of those express bus riders have stopped riding the express bus all the, all together. Uh, so, so our local transit buses have Pretty high ridership, and this express bus is a rare one. Way um, the rail, commuter rail, it, it dropped 90 to 95 percent on the Hartford line for ridership, um, and really hasn't come up much. Uh, so, so rail ridership is way down. Uh, my concern post pandemic is uh, for, uh, for those that are live outside the city, and post pandemic when offices are opening back up. Uh, the, we will actually see a surge of single occupancy vehicle driving, um, and folks that had previously been using express, tra express transit buses and rail um, may be slow to go back to that. But uh, even when we have a vaccine and we're in the middle of any kind of ride, so so that's another reason why we want to be um, making sure that uh, the bills that are getting paid for that kind of load in our city um, that that we have a way to generate revenue. That pays for the wear and tear on the costs. Okay, that's fair. I have another follow up question. Thank you for that information. So, we've gone through three different uh, directors for development services. We're now in our third director. And uh, I was wondering if there had been any conversations. I know that. There, there have been different conversations, but I'm just curious to, to know um, what kind of response has been um, provided from, from development services and or the administration. Councilman Gale. I, I haven't had that conversation. But. Yeah, nor have I. Um, I. I contact, I'm trying to remember now if it was, um, uh, L and I, who provided us with the with the, um, I, I do have a spreadsheet from someone. It was either I think it was L and I who provided the spreadsheet on the fees that are paid because they're the ones that are doing the licensing currently. Uh, so I do have a spreadsheet on who's paying what fees, and I, you know, I forget the total amount per year twenty five thousand. 
um, and, uh, you know, asked for that information, but we did not, I've not had any, so I've not talked to I. Charles Matthews uh, uh, about this concept, nor have I talked to uh, uh, Elda Sinati at LNI about the, um, the specifics of the ordinance. And then the, the last question is, are there any additional groups um, from the community standpoint that have been very much um, in favor of this? And I, and I recognize that, you know, the ordinance are, is already in the books, but um, in favor of promoting this change to having more um, parking, commercial parking spaces uh, fees increased. And I, and I mentioned that because of the history of looking at other cities who are very successful, um, who do a great job in having more growth, economic stability, and are certainly very environmentally friendly, go already, they're already there. They're already, this is something that they're, they have, they've already implemented from, you know, some time ago. And so I'm wondering if there's other groups in the Hartford area that have said, you know, this is what we, we want to see. Well, I, 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 I can let Tony speak uh, from what he knows. I, I, I don't know that I, I'm not, haven't been approached by any particular groups. I mean, this has been a, this has been an issue that as I, as I led off, and I don't know if you were with us at the beginning, Councilman Bermudez, uh, the brief introduction at the beginning of this meeting was to say that, you know, early on in my tenure here on council, uh, one of the very first things we were looking at was a land value tax very specifically to address uh, parking lot issues, understanding some of the data that Tony prevented, uh, presented that uh, from Norm Garrick. Uh, this is data that's been around now since 2014, but you know, all the data did was confirm what many of us uh, in the community have known, uh, that, that parking lots can be the death of a city. And uh, uh, yeah. so, uh, you know, various people have looked at various ways to uh, to address that. It's interesting to note that we had heard, for instance, that New Haven was more robust in this than, than we were. We actually got New Haven's ordinance and they're not. New Haven is, uh, New, New Haven's ordinance, we're going to have a much stronger ordinance than New Haven, trust me. Uh, New Haven ordinance is very much like our existing ordinance. It's, you know, $500 a year, $1,000 a year uh, per parking lot. So we found um, in Connecticut anyway, I don't, we didn't go out of, out of Connecticut, but we didn't find anybody in Connecticut uh, that's, uh, uh, you know, ramped it up to the, to this level at this point, which is another reason perhaps for let's get, let's get that nose in the, let's get the camel's yeah. nose in the tent. Um, yeah, I, I, th I think this is a, an excellent idea. Uh, excellent legislation that we should absolutely get behind. Uh, any other council members have any other questions? Councilman, um, LeBron? No. Okay. Um, the reason. Um, again, um, for me, um, after talking with Tony God at the beginning of the year, um, I think uh, Councilman Bermudez, you had approached me in doing this early part of this year, and then pandemic happened and nothing. Um, but I think, as um, John said, this is a great opportunity right now to really start discussing it. OK, and hearing from, uh, you know, businesses and everyone else in the community. Um, the reason why I would like to put this on the agenda as a presentation was to see if there's any interest from the council member in sponsoring a ordinance uh, like this. So, you know, with the presentation from Mr. Charles and with um, um, Councilman Gale's uh, knowledge from past four years, if it's something which you, um, the members would love to go forward it put with this um, ordinance, uh, I would love to work. Um, let us hear from you, um, uh, Councilman Gail. I would presume you would take the lead, uh, you know, and getting that ordinance, um, you know, out there. Um, for us, so um, what say ye? This is no vote. This is just a presentation, but just the, um, to hear your interest in doing something like this. Well, for the record, I would like to say, please add my name. I think it's an excellent proposal. Excellent legislation. Me too. Okay. Uh, I know I'm there um, with this uh, as a beginning and maybe as we go along with the ordinance and the presentation, uh, you know, for ordinance at public hearing, you know, we can certainly hear what the community have to say. So, John, what do you say um, working with um, uh, Tony? 
to get this going in the next um, couple of weeks. So we have a council meeting, so we're going to miss this council meeting next Monday. But maybe the following council meeting, you could get something on the agenda. We we, we certainly can, and uh, uh, I didn't mention it, but um, going back to the ordinance that I uh, put up on the screen, that ordinance has has already gone to corporation council as well. Uh, and okay. I, I didn't. I, I actually almost thought maybe uh, uh, Attorney Vasala would be with us tonight. I think we have a new uh, assistant corp counsel who's assigned to PEDH. Um, I, I was told that this is Attorney Richard uh, Vasallo, uh, and so uh, the I sent the ordinance over to uh, Attorney Vasallo for his uh, okay. you know, for him to take a look at it. That, that I don't know that that's necessarily the final look the corp council would give to it, uh, but he did add some comments, and you can see them in your uh, in your uh, version of it. Uh, okay. Um, Any other comments? Anyway, happy to happy to put a draft together. I, I've heard a number of names. Uh, I don't know if other council members want to uh, think about it at this point or jump in on sure. it. Um, let me know. All right. Great. Um, that was the only item we had on the agenda. And um, Mr. Chirolis, thank you so very much um, for doing this presentation. Um, and Councilman Gale, thank you so very much for your assistance in getting us to this point. Uh, looking forward to um, uh, making this real. Um, one of the things as a Hartford resident and as a driver, uh, living in Upper Albany, I uh, realized I, when I looked at um, Tony's presentation, I did not realize um, we're about three or four uh, neighborhood without um, cars. So um, this was very educational for me also. So uh, uh, I, wanna, I just want to thank Tony for all his work. I've sure. also talked to him on the phone and I know how hard he's worked on this and I really appreciate how he presents things transparent his passion and it really shows so thank you tony great great so hearing no other comments or um i will uh, call the committee meeting uh today to a close and um, thank everyone for joining us and thank the community for watching thanks for running thank it thank you um, and councilman surgeon i just did want to note that uh valerin uh, fernandez our kind for harper ambassador in Flint. Uh, I'm sorry. Who was that? Uh, Valerie Fernandez. Our my my intern had joined us. Uh, uh, just to listen in if you're, if you're keeping role um, attendees, public attendees. Oh sure. Um, I, I hope he's still on. Uh, I don't she, know if he's still on uh, or Valerie, not. She she had to, she had to leave uh, just a minute ago, so she. Okay. She well, let me, me thank Valerie very much for for her hard work. Uh, for helping Tony to put this presentation and getting it to us. So, Valerie, I apologize. I did not know you were on. Uh, we thank you very much on behalf of the residents of the city of Hartford uh, for all your support and all your help. Uh, and I'm sure when we have the uh, ordinance on the public uh, agenda, I hope you'll be joining us uh, and giving us some advice on how we go forward. So, thank you guys for everyone for joining us. Good night. Good night. Good night.